All right, what's up guys? Today we are bringing back one of our favorite YouTube series called Game IQ, if you remember. We shot it during COVID when everything was shut down and I sat there on a two box and dissected a lot of the plays that I did with Atlas, whether it was goal scoring opportunities, assist opportunities, transition, and all that. We thought it would be fun with the championship series coming up on February 22nd to do film breakdown of the new format that we're seeing submitted in the Olympics called Sixes. And we have two games to showcase. We should jump into it and let's break down some film. All right, a few rules before we jump into the action. Number one is if you pull the goalies, the runners are five on five. It's important to note. Leads to great transition, good space, and an exceptional form of lacrosse. I think it sort of mirrors basketball. Number two is that if you miss the net when you shoot, the ball goes in the other direction. So that universal language of, if you're the last one that touches the ball when it goes out, other team gets it. Number three is after the initial faceoff to start each quarter, if there's a goal, ball gets picked out of the net, and the ball goes in the other direction. So it keeps the pace much like basketball going. I love all of that, and we'll see more as we address these plays. So this first one, USA has the ball against Canada. Tom Schreiber passes it up to Goody. Even though it looks like a 1-2-2 set, it's no different than a 1-4-1 if you're playing 10 on 10. And Tom Schreiber is gonna clear through to create space for Goody to take the alley. So huge Tom created that space because he created a little bit of a challenge for Canada who didn't have an established crease on who was gonna help support the on-ball defender. And usually what you would see is that clear through defender on Schreiber would peel out to double team Goody. There's miscommunication and he gets a shot on the run. Great placement here on the replay going stick side hip. Here we have in this next possession, what we're gonna see often is mass substitution. So you have three USA players, three Canada players heading to the box for a quick substitution. Tom Schreiber got up out of the gates and then right here you have Colin Kirsch on the bottom of the screen recognizing a two on one. Boom, Tom Schreiber commits to one side of the field, draws Josh Byrne, and then you have Kirsch coming in with a wide angle to finish the ball high. Well done here. Again, much like basketball, you gotta have your subs and you have to have people hit transition to try to get quick goals. Next clip here, we have Canada's Jeff Teat, one of the greatest players in the world right now, starting out what they would say on his wrong side. So typically what they're gonna do is to set up a three-man side and a two-man side, much like they do in the indoor game. And on your strong side, if it is closer to the top of the screens we're seeing here, you're typically gonna see three righties. What they have here is a lefty with two righties. All right, so he notices that he would say he's on his wrong side. He's gonna get it to the left side ball, which is the two-man side. You have more room to operate what would be called an ISO. So watch as Teet here flips the ball diagonally quickly to see an opportunity where you have Brian Cole now operating with a ton of space. Now watch up top, the Canadians aren't dragged in to close down the space and underneath, Brian Cole has an opportunity to go above or below. He makes a quick swim move hesitation to get underneath and score. Now notice Jeff Teat was presenting himself as an option to set a pick to Cole. And he basically made what started as the short man side, the strong man side, bringing three lefties over there. So such momentum in space, it's a fast goal. You're gonna see a ton of fast goals and sixes action. Move crease diving allowed, and we're in the other direction. Now here's a great opportunity of how fast this transition happens. So you have a lefty and a righty on the near side screen. USA is playing someone at X, which I don't love for this game. And then we have a two man game at the top of the screen with two righties. So as we play, Justin Gutterdine makes a good hesitation as if he's going under the pick on the near side screen, number 13. He comes over the top, gets free, unfortunately is handcuffed. Now the ball is loose and you're gonna see a mass exodus towards the other side of the field. What you know is gonna be coached well in the championship series is getting back in transition and getting up to try to create opportunities. And what you see here is when the ball's on the ground, Canada immediately looks to see if they have space. And Dane Smith, who was the off ball defender, recognizes this as number 92, ball's on the ground. He's not even looking to pick it up. He's thinking if Challen Rogers is able to pick up this ground ball quickly, he has a break. Two USA players go to the ball, where in actuality, on that loose ball needs to concede and protect transition. He decides to go for it, comes up short. They have two men, and Challen Rogers makes a great play there. A one-handed scoot. Right in stride. 
Dane Smith has a chance to pick it up and throw a couple of pumps and score. Handcuff, ball's on the ground. You need to immediately get back and cover transition. There they go. One thing you'll see here. So right here, after Challen picks it up, notice behind him, number 24, right there, Jordan McIntosh. He's doing two things. He's pointing up to Dane Smith so that Challen can hear that and hopefully capitalize the opportunity. The other thing he's saying, I'm staying back in the event there's a turnover or reverse transition. So he holds, boom. See him hold right there. Dane has an opportunity to finish and score because what happens there is if it's a save, there's reverse transition opportunity. Here we go, this is England, Japan. England's on the power play five on four. It's a simple box for Japan. They're gonna rotate what we say is on a string. And then that means if England can notice that, you wanna pull the string over and capitalize in a three on two. So that man who has the ball now, he's sucking the string man out. That creates a three on two opportunity on the backside now as he passes it, boom, see that rotation? If the Japan player doesn't get pulled out as much, he can share two there and rotate with his feet back to the point man for England, but because he gets sucked out so far, number 16 has to rotate over. Next rotation's up, and you try to beat that with ball movement. A little late on what we call the coma, so coming across the crease slide, and if you're point blank, you're gonna score there. Okay, this next clip is a unique one. So you have England overloading one side with their offensive players, and then they have their on-ball dodger righty here, top right. Now what we're gonna see here is really a combination of errors from both teams. One is great defense on ball by Japan as he flushes this English player down behind X. Two, what England's doing right now is we call spaghetti offense. So it's helter-skelter. They're setting picks for each other. They're cutting. They're occupying their men. Japan is obviously in a system where they're trusting their on-ball defender and no established slide. So both are pretty risky. What we have here is, wow, great space by England, sets up an inside roll. Wrong bet by Japan because the on-ball defender gets beat. And that leads to a dive across the crease and a fantastic save. Here's what I would advise as we look at this replay. All right, you believe in your on-ball defender. When someone gets to X and approaches goal line extended, you've gotta offer support. And in this case, when someone's running spaghetti offense, as a defensive unit, you gotta go into what we call a zone or an established help. So what that would mean is one of their additional four players would sit right on the crease and say, I'm the hot man. The other three would share the four up top for England by going a straight line across the goal. When you do this, you're risking that off-ball players are gonna get open, but you're also offering support in a really, really dangerous area. In any event, inside roll, no support, fantastic bailout by the goalie. Crease dive here by Russell. I would change levels. Now here's the last clip of the day. It was overtime, bronze match. We have Japan with the ball. It's a pretty spread offense here. You have number 15 at the top of the screen that really would be in the way of a Dodger, but because England's pressing out, there is a opening here for this Dodger to take the alley, which we see right there, okay? Ideally, you would get support from that defender up top who squeezed towards the sideline, but because he's watching his man, he doesn't come over. And that means he relies on the crease support for the English player that's guarding number two on Japan. It comes a little late and it comes flat. And you would argue that maybe not at all. Doesn't look like 14 really has a shot. But as soon as he sees the crease man float, what a great reaction to lever pass that to number two. Now, what England needs right now is a second slide. That's probably gonna come from number seven or number three. Both of them, as we rewind, are also too far extended. Now you ask yourself, why extend this far if you're not seeing many off-ball shots? Well, it's overtime, they're probably tired. Great time to attack, great lever pass. No second support causing the crease man to try to react and come back. He bites for the first pump fake, great twister to finish. Japan wins their first ever bronze medal in international lacrosse competition. What's so great about sixes and why that is gonna be the version of Olympic play is number one, it eliminates really high difficulty 
positions like face off and long pole. When I say high difficulty, this is where US, Canada, and the Haudenosaunee have just so much advantage because they've been playing this game on the outdoor level in Town of 10 for so long. And we saw in this competition when you pull the face off advantage, typically US, Canada, and the long pole, typically US, Canada has developed their long pole. Shout out to Brody Merrill over the last couple of decades. But those skill positions neutralize the style of play, and we're seeing equal possessions and more opportunity for countries that are emerging like Japan. I talked to Brody Mero, who was coaching Team Canada on site of these games. I said, do you have an opportunity to talk to Japan and what was the difference this time versus previous ones? And they've been in the blue division for over two decades. And he said he did. He spoke to one of their managers who had uh, an English speaking background. Two things, one, they're playing lacrosse at the college level. But number two was really interesting. He said access to YouTube. Now more than ever versus when Brody and I were growing up, you can watch highlights. Through watching the highlights, you can acquire a skill, you can learn new things, you can practice that outside. Make sure you check out the championship series. All of the games are gonna be broadcasted on the ESPN family of networks. Make sure you subscribe to ESPN Plus. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Let us know in the comments section what other things we want to game IQ. I'm thinking international competition from 10 on 10s. I'm even thinking some Charlotte North stuff, some of the Canon stuff from two seasons ago, etc. Maybe Hopkins. So let us know and thanks for checking this one out. See you guys in DC.